Buddhism compares men to a river. Both retain their identity despite the fact that their individual composition is different at different times. The position of a body as the foundation of a self-identity is a dubious proposition at best. Bodies change drastically in time. Consider a baby compared to an adult. Almost all the cells in a human body are replaced every few years. Changing one's brain by transplantation also changes one's identity, even if the rest of the body remains the same. Thus, the only thing that binds a person together, in other words, gives him a self and an identity, is time, more precisely, memory. By memory I also mean personality, skills, habits, retrospected emotions, in short, all the long-term imprints and behavioral patterns. The body is not an accidental and insignificant container, of course. It constitutes an important part of one's self-image, self-esteem, sense of self-worth, and sense of existence, spatial, temporal, and social. But one can easily imagine a brain in vitro as having the same identity as when it resided in a body. One cannot imagine a body without a brain, or with a different brain, as having the same identity it had before the brain was removed or replaced. What if the brain in vitro, in the above example, could not communicate with us at all? Would we still think it possessed of a self? The biological functions of people in a coma are maintained, but do they have an identity, self? If yes, why do we pull the plug on them so often?